Hey, this is Brett the Hitman Hart, and you're listening to the Smack Raw Podcast. I'm like, okay, well, has this always been a thing? Where have I been? <laughs> What's going on, you guys? Welcome to the NXT Recap, brought to you by the SmackDown Podcast. I'm your host, Katie Katie Bay Bay. Bay Bay. I'm joined, of course, to the Shaq, who was on the other show, to my Kobe, uh, <laughs> RN. How you doing? I'm good, girl. What's up with you? Oh, you know, not much. Out here podcasting, living the dream. Mm. Can you tell in the sound of my voice? <laughs> right. Don't get too excited. Yeah, I'm going to try not to. I'm going to try. <laughs> but we are a wrestling recap podcast. You can find us live for the Raw, Dynamite, and SmackDown recaps on twitch.tv slash putting you over. You can find me and RN usually um, for the NXT recaps on our personal Twitch, twitch.tv slash podcast. If you miss a live stream, you can head on over to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash podcast. Hit the like button, subscribe if you please, and hit the notification bell so you get notified every time we post a new video. This is a long week for the podcast. We had Raw, we have Dynamite and NXT, we got SmackDown, we got a prediction show, and we have Revolution on Sunday. Yep. Normal pay-per-view week. <laughs> Nothing is going to be as crazy as Mania week. No. Uh. <laughs> Especially if they end up really having a, a Take takeover or whatever on a Thursday. <laughs> Y'all just start praying now. It's going to be a right. long week. <laughs> I saw that schedule and I gagged a little, not going to lie. It was... <laughs> well, it'll be at least three shows for everybody except for Kev. We know he's only going to do one. <laughs> Kevin will do one, maybe. He might even dip on Raw. It's fine. Whatever. Uh. <laughs> uh, if you don't like to watch your podcast, you can find the audio form on basically every podcast platform you can think of. And if you don't like to watch podcasts or listen to podcasts, but you still like wrestling content, head on over to WrestlingNewsWorld.com. Check out the articles they have over there by fantastic people, fantastic writers. We also are the exclusive recap for them, so support them. You support us, too. And speaking of supporting, RN, where can they go to, you know, support the show? Patreon slash SmackDraw Podcast. Yep. We have four tiers, right? Mm Mm-hmm. Not sure what they're called, but... uh, That's fine. (laughs) If you can get some stickers, cop these new, the new uh, mute RNs, we got some of those in. (laughs) T-shirts, if Kyle likes you. Uh, You can actually get your unpopular opinion recorded and played on the show. Uh, if you do, I think that's the highest tier, but other than that, that's all I remember. Back to you, Katie. <laughs> uh, for the $25 tier, you get all of the stuff and you'll, yeah, that's when you'll get your shirt. If Kyle likes you enough, it like, let's be real guys. It took me like four months to get a shirt. So facts. I don't even know where it is now. I wore it once. Haven't seen it since. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but then we'll also promote your stuff for the whole month like we did for D-Rod back in September and speaking of UWO which is returning soon within the month we ha- we got our wish guys we got it we got the dream lineup for UWO we got RN himself and Young Kings Wrestling that's what we asked for facts cyberbullying works don't ever think it doesn't Cyberbullying works. <laughs> Honestly, he begrudgingly, Kyle is gonna have one of the best UWO casts. I can't wait to watch it. RN's gleaming with happiness to be on it. You just look at his face; you can see it. You can see the happiness. <laughs> that was amazing. No, I got shit on the last time. I got st- I was stuck in the airport. Yeah. And didn't make it in town in time to the last one. So. Kyle owed me regardless. Him getting Young Kings to do it is uh, cherry on the top. Tell RN he better not leave town and fuck it up, says Matt. I'm not. Also, hi, Matt. 
No, we're not going anywhere next Sunday for sure. Yeah, you is it next Sunday? Wait, yeah, yeah, next Sunday at nine. Okay. I, what channel would be on? I don't know. S- mm-hmm. s- follow Twitter at SmackerUpPod, and you'll figure it out. I'm, I'm sure we'll have it posted somewhere. <laughs> It'll be somewhere. I don't know. That's not my department. Anytime anyone asks me about UWO, I'm like, not no. That's not my department. I don't do that. <laughs> All right, let's talk about NXT. Overall, what do you think? It was a decent show. I mean, I mean they don't know how to put on a bad show. Let's just keep it 100. But mm-hmm. it, it was a decent show. Definitely had uh, at least one banger on it. So good to go. I mean, it, when when we talk about the therapy stuff, I can't wait to get your opinion on that. But we started <laughs> with a. A pretty decent match, honestly. Like, definitely the most hard-hitting of the night. Uh, the tag team champions, Danny Burch and Oni Lorcan, taking on uh, Toothless Timmy, Timothy Thatcher, <laughs> and Tommaso Ciampa. And I-, I caught it, and, like, at the end it made sense. But Fabian Eichner was standing outside for waiting for them to do their entrance. Did you catch that? No, I didn't, actually. So, Thatcher, like, comes to the door, and Eichner's kind of just standing right there. And then they do their entrance. Um, These four guys, I mean, we know all of them are some of the most hard-hitting guys in the business. And I legitimately thought and still kind of think Thatcher's legit injured. I was thinking that, but he always does that shit with his ne- arm and his neck every match. Like, But this time it seemed heightened, because he does do that. I mean, Champa still scares me because of his actual neck issues. So anytime right. he touches his neck, I'm screaming at the TV, please don't be hurt. <laughs> I'm just telling you, I think we're getting Thatcher with, ring- with uh, Imperium. I mean, based off of how this happened, so... <laughs> Match goes on. Great match. I love the teamwork of Thatcher and Tommaso now. I was kind of hesitant at first because I liked them as rivals better. I'm about it. Don't get used to it. I, well, I'm not going to now. <laughs> <laughs> because towards the very end of the match, Imperium is kind of just standing on the ramp. Obviously, Walter is not there. we got to point right. that out. Walter is yeah, MIA. Walter. And Danny and Oni hit their finish on Thatcher for the win. And, uh, yeah, this definitely... We're getting something with Imperium and Thatcher. Well, like I said, he was already with Walter and Rain Camp, which was... And Eichner was involved in that as well. So, that's why I think we might get Imperium USA. Imperium USA, and then just have Walter chill in UK by himself. Well, they're, they're going back, and a lot of the U.K. stuff is pre-recorded, so they could be, be both places at once. <laughs> I, I, didn't think, I didn't even think about, like, the U.K. stuff being, like, pre-recorded. I mean, that makes sense. That's going to be so dope, though, getting Thatcher with, like, Imperium, make him a, a real threat again in U.S. territory. Right. Oh, baby. I just hope Walter comes over at least. Like, and if that happens, like, I want them to be a tag team. Like, because they are fucking dope together. Like, it's crazy. Uh, apparently, you and your dog are twins, according to Matt. Yeah, that's what everybody says. Because <laughs> she's a black dog, so, of course, the white people think we look alike. <laughs> hey, I just read the chats, man. <laughs> All right, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Roderick Strong comes out to the ring immediately calls out Adam basically being like if this brotherhood meant anything to you come out and explain yourself that doesn't happen Finn Balor comes out and is like when are you going to learn uh, like y- he's not going to come out here like you know Adam right. as a person he's not going to come out here <clears throat> and Roderick Strong uh, brings up a good point. The Undertaker was fine until Finn Balor kind of started poking his head in the picture. Facts, literally facts. I like I don't agree with Roddy much, 
but I agreed so much with that point. I was like, I mean, that's what happened. Kyle and Finn started getting all buddy-buddy after Kyle started going after the title, and all hell broke loose. So Finn broke up the Undisputed Era. You heard it here first. Facts. And then Finn goes on to say, well, your brotherhood fell apart because of the title, and you want to know how to get Adam out here. He turns right into the camera is like, Adam Cole versus Finn Balor for the NXT title next week. Which will be happening, by the way. What? We can only hope that uh, Adam wins. I fucking hope so. I fucking hope so. But now, it's, it's, the only thing about that is, like, I, well, actually, no, I think he probably will win, because I, I keep forgetting, like, if that's what, what we saw is true about uh, that takeover happening in April, so... Could get it back, give it back, put it back on, or put it back somebody else at takeover. That's true. Maybe I don't know timing wise, but we could get Kyle versus Adam for the title at takeover. That's I was thinking somewhere along the lines of that, but I mean I I don't know if we'll have we won't have time to keep that going. I guess maybe yeah. Or it ended up being a triple threat at Mania. I mean not Mania, but whatever that week of Mania. Week of Mania fucking takeover is Whatever. on a Thursday night. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> they're trying to drain me that week. Whatever. But I do like what Finn said to Roddy. He said, you'll never be a leader. You're always going to be a follower. <laughs> Which, don't call the, the... Don't murder the man on TV. He's got a family. So, I mean, but it's all true. He's always a part of the group. He's never the head of the group. I know. I know. And he says, well, you gotta have that killer instinct. And they just start brawling. <laughs> and then they have to get separated. Which leads to a match later in the night. Uh, Matt wants Finn versus Karrion Cross. I wouldn't mind it. I, don't, I mean... I think, my thing, though, with, with Finn, I think we're coming to the end of his title reign. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's not. I know a lot of it isn't his fault because everybody kept getting hurt and they had to keep figuring out ways to get contenders and stuff. But like, I don't really see what the point of his having the belt still does for NXT. I think he's more valuable not being in the title picture. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what they'll end up doing with the title. I mean, like you said, I hope it goes on cool next week, and then from there. Maybe we get that rematch at TakeOver. Maybe Kyle intervenes somehow at that, leading to a nice long feud between him and Adam. Adam, That's what I want, at least. That's what I'm thinking is going to happen. He's going to win this and then lose it at TakeOver because of Kyle, and then they go into their program. Yeah. Cool. Look at that. We agreed on something. We agree on 90% of this I was going to say, we <laughs> usually agree. Me and Kevin don't agree on anything. Fucking weird. All right, anyway. Let's talk about the way therapy sessions. <laughs> what, did, what, did, what is your opinion on these? They weren't terrible. <laughs> like, I, I, I did not think I was going to like them at all. But there was some parts that was actually kind of legit. And then the ending, for sure, was funny as hell. <laughs> So I'm just going to group all of these together because there's no yeah, point in going all the way back and forth. <clears throat> so it starts with all four uh, mm-hmm. members of this family on the couch and the therapist, who is not Kyle O'Reilly, by the way, which a little disappointed. Right. As she's basically saying, well, this is I usually talk to my patient one at a time. Johnny's like, no, 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 we're a family. It's fine. Austin Theory is under the impression that he doesn't have a Dexter Loomis problem. He was simply on a vacation for three days. And while this is all happening, they're having a conversation. Indy is doodling uh, Mrs. Indy Wrestling Loomis in her notebook. I I just can't. And Johnny's like, well, why isn't Loomis in jail yet? He's kidnapping people. All of this, there's, and uh, the therapist then says, well, there seems to be some deep-rooted issues within you, Johnny, because he's getting all mad at Austin Theory for thinking Dexter Loomis is an okay guy. And 
Johnny says, well, no, you're not supposed to therapy on me. You're supposed to therapy Mm -hmm. on him. And she ends up kicking Johnny from the room. And then we cut to the second therapy session. And Austin Theory is just like, listen, Dexter Loomis is a good guy. He just gets lonely (laughs) sometimes. He just wanted a friend to talk to. And you can hear Candace's phone buzzing. And Johnny is texting her from outside the door, saying, well, he's crazy, uh, Johnny's neck still hurts, he kidnapped, um, like, Roddy, and Bobby, and Austin, and then, again, the therapist is just like, no, Candace, Indy, you guys gotta go, because she finds out that- What? When they were talking about being friends with Loomis and uh, Indy was like, I'll be friends with them, friends with benefits. Yeah, Indy was thirsting. She was thirsting. She was probably the best part about this whole thing, to be honest. The the subtle things she was saying, because it was, I mean, right. the main focus was Austin Theory's infatuation with Dexter Loomis, but Indy's love for Dexter Loomis. Fire. And then we get the final segment where... The therapist asks, well, what really happened in those three days? <laughs> Austin's like, listen, I had a great time. I was in a small room. Windows were boarded up. I ate cereal. I watched cartoons. And Dexter Loomis is just a nice guy. And the therapist is like, no, 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 no. I spoke with Dexter Loomis. Which, as soon as she said that, we knew shit was incorrect. Because Dexter Loomis does not right. talk. The man was a host of a takeover, basically, and didn't say a damn thing. Never said one word in, like, two and a half hours. Exactly. Basically, she said, well, Dexter Loomis was disgusted with your eating habits, and you're t- you took all of his shirts and cut them into crop tops. <laughs> it's, it's just basically berating Austin Theory to the point where he's crying, and he runs out of the room, and Johnny and Candace and Indy are just like, what did you do to him? And they, excuse me, they take Austin out of the room, and Johnny's like, I'm gonna go get that therapist to piece of my mind. Pays her off. I, like, I like that Johnny's just being a, an overprotective dad of his son, not liking right. his new friend. That's literally what this is. Literally. Glad it's over. What do you think is going to happen now? Uh, we're definitely getting Dexter and Johnny. Just don't know when or how. Probably at that takeover in a month. Because right. yeah. April's not busy enough. Has to be. That's that's the only way I can see fit. Like That's the only way anything's going to happen. Right. Uh, maybe we have Dexter Loomis kidnap Indy next. But then she doesn't. Like She comes back but then ends up like leaving anyways with him? I don't know. I, I mean, I, I, I like that we don't really know, but I just hope we're done with the funny shit. I see that. I or mean, not just, or at least stop making it all funny shit. Yeah. No, that that I understand. Like, you can have a little bit of comedy, but like... every This whole thing is comedy, like... Yeah, ever since he, ever since Dexter Loomis got... Uh, ever since Austin Theory got kidnapped by Dexter Loomis, it's just yeah. been comedy. But <clears throat> speaking of comedy, Cameron Grimes, the 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 millionaire or the billionaire, he wants to change the name of the CWC to the uh, CGA, the Cameron Grimes Auditorium. <laughs> and Regal comes up to him and is like, "Listen, you hit a like a crew member last week. It's not okay." So, since you have all this money, you want to do whatever, now you have a contract, so you're going to be facing Bronson Reed later in the night. And then, what did he say about Ted DiBiase? That damn Ted DiBiase, he was yeah. cursing him. <laughs> cursing Ted DiBiase, of all people to curse. Well, it's because Cameron Grimes is like, everyone has a price to Regal, and Regal's like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> right. Regal was not having anyone's shit this week, and I love our dad, William Regal. We'll get to that. 
Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, following that, we got Aaliyah taking on Ember Moon. I mean, the match itself was fine. Like, kind of... Wow. Kind of just there. The right. Robert Stone brand, so Robert Stone and uh, Jessica Maya try and get involved. Shotzi takes them out. Robert Stone still has international fear of the tank because Shotzi ran him over a few times. And Ember ends up hitting the Eclipse for the win. That's basically all that happened in that match. That's literally what I ha happened in that match. That's all I have written down. Nailed it. And it's not anybody's fault. Aaliyah's just not on the level that uh, Ember is. Yeah. And that, that's just, just, there's no other way around it or any better way to explain it. She was outclassed. Yeah. And, like, you gotta start to feel bad for Aaliyah because she has been in NXT for so long. Right. But she just, I don't, I don't know. Their women's division stacked now, so. She's it, done. Yeah. Poor Aaliyah. But, um, moving on, we got an interview with, uh, Thatcher and Champa, mainly Thatcher, backstage. And he's like, well, we all have a history and a past, and Imperium's trying to focus on my past with them and bring it to light. And then Champa's just like, listen, the past is in the past. Let's go. So now Champa's gonna lose another friend. Yep. Just get Tommaso a friend. I mean, to be fair, he did ruin his friendship with Johnny. But, yes. still. DIY forever. <coughs> <laughs> then we got a nice little uh, vignette about Tony and Io for their title match next week. I mean, it's the same stuff they have both been saying the past few weeks. Right. Like, Nothing new. Yeah, Io respects her, but respects her as an athlete, doesn't respect her as a person. Next week is Tony's time. You know, the usual stuff. Yep. But that match is going to be fire. Yeah, they're going to beat the shit out of each other. I can't wait. NXT, can't next, wait. NXT next week is going to be stacked. Yeah, next week is a fire show for sure. And now we move on to what I think definitely should have been the main event. Especially with the ending, but whatever. I digress. We got the women's tag team title match. So we got Nia and Shayna, who are the champs, taking on Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez. <clears throat> Listen, everything I wanted to happen between these four women happened. Right. Like, we got the face-off with Dakota Kai and Shayna. Dakota Kai saying, I'm not afraid of you anymore. Shayna even tried the same arm move that took Kai out for, like, a month, like, months back when Shayna was in NXT. Reversed it. <clears throat> Reversed it. We got to see Raquel and Nia go at it, which that was everything I wanted. Right. Everything that we, I mean, that was the whole reason why I wanted them to win the Dusty Cup to begin with for this matchup. Exactly. And looks like we're going to get to see it again, too. So let's go. Yeah, because uh, the end of this match is basically a shit show. Shayna has Dakota Kai in the Carry Poodle Clutch. Dakota Kai somehow makes it to Raquel, tags her in. Uh, she stomps Shayna. They break the hold. She runs over and delivers a boot to Nia Jax, inadvertently taking out the ref. And then they go over the announce table. So everyone's out and down. Shayna applies the Carry Poodle Clutch again on Dakota Kai. Adam Pierce, the unofficial official GM of Raw, sends out a ref. Kai's out, and and still, NX uh, women's tag team champions, which no no, that's some bullshit. Code Kai wasn't even legal. Adam Pierce isn't an official on NXT. This was a screw job. It was a job to make sure that this title stay on the road, which I'm not mad at. Some sort of death and gives the tag team titles a story finally, not just them fucking getting jobbed out to yeah. single stars and shit. I, I like that they did this, honestly, because um, right. later in the night we see, we don't get to hear, we get to see Regal and Adam Pierce having a heated discussion. And before the main event, William Regal says, well, because of what happened, 
during that match. Uh, he has an announcement next week that will change the landscape of NXT. Women's tag team titles. Yeah, I was going to say, we're definitely going to get NXT women's tag team titles. Which, good. Yep. The majority of tag teams for women are in NXT. Right. And that this when's the last time? Is this the first time they've ever come down? Or no, Sasha and Bailey came down, didn't they? Yeah. So, yeah. Fuck them. Bye. <laughs> Give them their own titles. <laughs> Bye. I mean, if that's what we get, I'm happy about it. If it's not that, I have no freaking idea what it'll be. They need their own secondary titles. Tag team titles included. Yeah. No, I agree. Uh, did the way stuff. Oh, Swerve. So he's in, like, yes. a recording studio. And he basically says, well, Leon Ruff is getting handed opportunity after opportunity. He's tripping his own, over his own feet for it. And he's got to grind to get any type of opportunity. And he basically says to Leon, you don't want to go to war with someone who cares less than you do. Oh, no, that wasn't basically. That's exactly what he said. Well, yeah. Well, because at first I, ch- <laughs> I, I had something else written down, but then I saw that they tweeted what, exactly what he said. Right. So I had to switch it. So we're going to get he will swerve to the fullest degree, which is what you've been wanting. Yeah, get him out of this slump. Let him break somebody's arm off, you know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. Get him back where he needs to be. Yeah. I I don't know much about Swerve, obviously, like, pre-NXT. You do, and you've talked about it. So, from what you've told me, you got me intrigued, and I want to see it, so. Like, I don't know how far they're going to push it on this, but, like, he went out of his way to be, like, to do some screwed up shit. Like, it wasn't like, he was your average bad guy. Like, he was... He was doing the arm breaking thing like way before Penta was. <laughs> so maybe we'll get to see that side of Swerve probably like come next week or if not. I mean, yeah. next week's card's pretty stacked, so probably like the week after. If unless they do like a vignette or something backstage like this. That's also true. Following that, we got the technically in-ring debut of LA Knight and he's basically saying well you think this is a dream no this is a business I am a one man revolution who just rolled in I'll be the guy uh, setting records changing how everything is done and he's going to beat the absolute hell out of everyone because he doesn't do that flippy shit basically called out uh, Gargano what? Called out half the roster. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, the names I remember were uh, Gargano, Finn, Kyle, and I th- think Cole? Yes. I don't remember. He probably said other people. Those are the ones that stuck no, out those are the, those are only four names he said. Oh, okay. I mean, this guy, like, I know who Eli Drake is dope, and he was dope, but, like, I just keep thinking of uh, Jason Sudeikis. That's all I could think of. That's all I'm going to be able to think about now. Thanks. He sounds like him. He looks like him. Like, that's all I'm thinking about now. Like, and the fucking name. I'm sorry. That name is lame as fuck. The name's awful. Awful. L.A. Night. Like, what? Who? Whose idea? Who do we got to go beat up down in Florida? Like, <laughs> Jesus. Like, who? Who? Like, literally, like, who? I, I'm just lost on it. Like, <laughs> I just keep thinking like British Knight shoes and shit every time he says it. Like, and like, are you? Are is he a luchador? Like, is it? Is it La Knight? Like, is it L? Like, what? La what Knight. the? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, Jeez, like, LA Park. Like, what the hell is going on here? It's awful. It's an awful name, and it just—I don't know. It, but no fucking sense. It. I don't know. He goes on a nice tangent, and then we get Bronson Reed coming out for his scheduled match with Cameron Grimes. LA Knight, which I even hate saying that is, that's what his name is, reluctantly leaves. <laughs> and we get the match between Bronson and Grimes. Cameron Grimes obviously tries to get a little bit of offense in. 
he succeeds, and and this is like his first match in months, right? Yeah. One of the two. It was a better, way better match than I. I mean, with, not way down, but they've wrestled before, so like they have good chemistry, and it's a, it was a good match. Mm-hmm. It just kills me how small Bronson Reed actually is, like height wise. Like him and Cameron Grimes are the exact same height. He's he's tiny. He just outweighs him by fifty pounds, but. <laughs> And that definitely makes a difference because he was just tossing Cameron around that ring. Right. And at one point, Cameron Grimes tries to leave and, like, he takes his hat, puts his hat back on. Bronson Reed goes through the ropes. And while Reed gets on the top rope, L.A. Knight kind of throws the hat in the ring and the ref's, like, distracted taking that away. Like, takes Reed off the top, allows Cameron Grimes to hit a nasty and beautiful cave-in for the win. Like, I never would have thought I would say the sentence, Cameron Grimes won, <laughs> because it hasn't right. happened in so long. Right. And, w- and with his finisher, no stupid shit. Get it done and out the way. I know. Like, is is this a new Cameron Grimes, or does he just have a friend, an associate in L.A. Night now? I don't think they were together, but knowing NXT, they could be. Yeah, true. I mean, Cameron Grimes is like got GameStop money now, so right. <laughs> <laughs> Which is still the... whatever. <laughs> Fucking ridiculous. So after that, we got a interview with Caden Carter. We find out that Casey Catanzaro is legitimately injured. She tore it. LCL, which sucks. So we don't know how long she'll be out. But Caden's like, I don't give a damn about Zia Lee. You took out my girl. Now I gotta take her out. All I see is red, and next week she can just come get it. Obviously, I summed that up, but Caden Carter did a fantastic job. Yeah, that no, that wasn't summed up. That was the <laughs> basis of it, but it was just her, how she delivered it. Like, and that was the thing that I was like if on the fence about her and Katie about Casey about is that their shit didn't it felt normal it felt like they were being themselves but it did it felt like they weren't turned up enough enough but with this Zia shit we did get to see like even Casey was doing better on the mic and mm-hmm. Kaden definitely that but that was by far the best promo she's ever did maybe the first promo she's ever did honestly <laughs> but it definitely was the the best one that she did like. It felt natural, and like sometimes you do get this when your tag team partner goes out, and one of the guys gets a chance to be on their own or gar- girl, and then you see maybe the team was holding them back. So maybe we'll get something like that. But like that definitely was a that was a dope ass promo by her. Maybe I mean this is like kind of the first time since uh, Caden was in the May Young Classic. She was going by Lacey Lane at the time, but this is like the first time she's going solo in a long time and when she has her match with Zaya next week I'm I'm excited yeah absolutely then we get uh, the, did the way therapy stuff we're supposed to get Ever Rise taking on Breezango however that does not happen because Legado de Fantasma attack Breezango beat their asses up and Ever Rise are just like, yeah, Ever Rise rules. Thanks, guys. God, they're so ass. <laughs> I didn't even expect Ever Rise to even be in the ring. I was like, look at the time. Why are we doing this? Like, main event? The fuck? But Santos ends up taking Ever Rise out by himself and then stands in the ring, says, well, don't mistake last week events as my weakness if you do this is what awaits you obviously calling right. out carrying cross again which my dude that's a mistake let that go like just let it fucking go now we get it you want to prove yourself but dude carrying cross he can eat you <laughs> <sighs> i don't know do you like where does this go with them I don't know. I don't either. Like, it doesn't... Yeah, I, I don't know. 
I legitimately don't know what... You can't even put the cruiserweight title on Cross because he's not a cruiserweight. <laughs> no, by any any stretch of imagination, he's not a cruiserweight. Yeah, and he, just looking at him, whether you knew his weight or it's not. Technically, uh, the, uh, technically Santos isn't either. If I mean, if we, they say, if, if they're saying he's two hundred five on paper, that means he's probably two ten, two fifteen. Yep. Yeah. So I don't know, like I like this. I like this rivalry. But the fact that the cruiserweight title is wrapped up in it is what's fucked up. Mm-hmm. It's like when they have the Raw is perfect example. They always have a cool feud, but the title always gets in the way. Like with the women and right. Charlotte and Lacey. And I'm not even going to get into that because that's where I take all my aggression out on Monday nights. Hell yeah. <sighs> That whole situation pisses me. I went off. Also, Kevin called me a bitch during the podcast, and he meant it. You, you could hear it in his voice. <laughs> he said it because I was popping off about Charlotte, respectfully so. And he said something about, like, oh, kayfabe sense, bitch. And, the, like, the bitch was, like, and it caught me so off guard. And I was just like, what the fuck? Kevin was about to, I was about to drive my ass out to New York and whoop Kevin's ass. <laughs> yeah, I don't like I said, I don't know. Like I don't I don't get what they're doing. Really now, after we talked all that good shit and that good water they built up going into the classic, mm-hmm. now it's like none of the none of the tag teams have any type of fucking direction. No, 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 there's no direction no for anybody. No. Like you had We had one. We had some, but then MSK uh, Wes ended up actually being in- injured in real life, so yeah. the only story that was really ha- had anything going for it now is thrown out the window, so it's kind of like we're kind of back to where we started before the Dusty. Yeah, it's like everything that happened with the men's Dusty Classic kind of went out the window. The cruiserweight tournament thing we had in the beginning of the last year basically out the window now because Cross is involved with it. It... NXT, get your shit together. Literally, get your shit together. Please. We want, like, good people in these for these titles right now. Cross right. ain't gonna be near the Cruiserweight title in any way, shape, or form. Whatever. Gives me a headache. <laughs> Alright, let's talk about his main event. Wow. Yeah. As much shit as we give Roddy... He's so good. <laughs> Hold on, who's, who's, who's this we thing? Uh, like, no we... we no, 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 no. We give Roddy shit for being... Believing Finn. Okay. I mean, not Finn, believing Adam. That's what I gave him shit for. Well, that and, like, his mic skills are subpar. But he can just go in the ring and, I mean, you saw Finn's chest afterwards. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> It was so. It was such a good match. That's the only thing too. Like I wonder, like what are they gonna do with him? Cause like I, I hope they don't just stick him on two hundred five live. Like, mm-hmm. cause honestly, his matches with bigger guys are better than his matches when yeah. he goes up against someone his own size because how strong he is and how fast he is. So like the styles contrast enough to make it a a decent fight mm-hmm. and a fight that's worth watching. So like. I, I don't know, like I, that's this. That was my main thing with Undisputed Era breaking up, because even with Kyle O'Reilly, everybody can say what they want about how much his charisma is and what they think this and what they think is that. The main thing is, is he's still at that glass ceiling as far as his height. Mm-hmm. Like he's, I'm almost positive he's shorter than Daniel Bryan, so that tells you something right there. Yeah, I don't. They, he definitely is like on the shorter side. And he's and no weight to him. He's probably. Every bit of fucking 175, 180, if that. Especially since his, because of his condition, like, his weight fluctuates. Yeah. I'm actually going to see how much Kyle O'Reilly weighs, according to Google. I'd say 185, 187 tops. They have him built at 200. So, like I said, <laughs> <laughs> 180, 180 to 190, probably. I mean, it's very possible he could have been 200 at one point. But... Again, like I said, you're right. It could have been, because, like, with his diabetes like his weight fluctuates it yeah. goes ups and down and that's why i think a lot of people don't understand that like when he goes off when he comes back 
why he looks so different because a lot of it is that. Yeah. Which, I fucking love Kylo Ren. Right? <laughs> Facts. I can't wait for Kylo to come back. But, this match was awesome. Roddy took it to Finn as best as he could. The coolest part was, I can't remember what move Roddy was going for, but Finn reversed it into a double stomp to the chest. And I screamed. I was like, that was so dope. <laughs> that was fucking awesome. I love they Finn. They the shit out of each other. Like, it was, yeah. this was hard hitting. This was strong style from the top to bottom. Like, mm-hmm. they didn't pull any fucking punches. They, and that's what I like about Finn, too, especially him coming back down here. He knew, he knows the type of matches he wants to have. He knows the direction he wants his style to go and what he wants it to look like. Yeah. He wants it to look like Japan Finn, like Prince Devitt. Mm-hmm. So, like, all these matches have had that signature in them. So, I wasn't mad at that. And Roddy, that's right up Roddy's wheelhouse, too. Mm-hmm. That strong style. Like you said, look at Finn's chest after the match. I mean, speaks for his fucking self. Yeah. And Finn, it, you, some could say, like, Finn barely came away with the win because Roddy was going after his back the whole time. He ends up hitting the coup de gras and then the 1916 for the win. And then we see Adam Cole standing on the ramp and they have the signature stare down before their matchup next week. What a show. It was a dope show. Like, not how we went through it, it really was dope. Yeah, I mean, I didn't have a lot of (laughs) oomph behind it. Because a lot of it was, like, a lot of it was repeating things that, like, the way therapy Mm -hmm. that there's not a whole lot to, like, dive into with that no but next week's gonna be awesome thank you guys for watching uh stay tuned on putting you over on friday yep. for smackdown with rn and kyle yep. and then sunday is the revolution aw revolution pay-per-view and the recap will be happening on putting you over i'm assuming after the fact and your girl's going back i'm taking i'm taking it <laughs> i told i told kyle I, and i'm also prefacing this i'm not hosting it i'm not producing it i just want to be on it he took my show away from me i deserve to be on it facts so, so ne- that's our next cyberbullying campaign then <laughs> i mean i t- i well originally when i thought i was gonna go solo tonight i told him i was like as long as i can be a part of the revolution recap i don't care and he said okay, Facts. so. It's, yeah, but we know what his okays mean. <laughs> well, actually, okay. he's, to be fair, he said word. So that might be worse. Yeah. But regardless, I'm gonna be on there. So support, come support me because I know I bring in all the fans now. Facts. Just kidding, I don't. That's fine, whatever. <laughs> uh, yeah. Again, thanks for watching, guys, and we'll catch you next time. Bye bye. Catch you Friday. Thank <laughs> you.